Jim Brands coming here for the Simac Boy Vlog. Today we're doing another top 10 list and this list is kind of based on a series I've been doing for the month of November 2024 at the Lost Fields 3 where I have my weekly residency through the American Cinematheque. I've been doing a thing called the Art House of Horrors which are basically kind of art house movies with a horror bent. I've been showing things like The Haunting, Repulsion, Kiraneko, and Diabolique and as I was thinking about it, most of these movies outside of Diabolique are made in the 60s. So I thought, you know what, maybe I should do a top 10 horror films of the 60s list. So that's what I'm doing today. So again, with all these lists, just a couple of reminders. One, this is just my personal list. It is not the end all be all. And some of you may agree, some of you may disagree, but if you disagree, don't get mad. Just tell me the movies that you love from the 60s. That's all you have to do. It's I'm not right and you're not wrong and you're not right and I'm not wrong. It's just opinion. It's just fun. Just enjoy the list for what it is. And obviously one film per filmmaker, just so there's kind of a variety. I already know I'm probably gonna catch some heat because a certain 60s horror movie, which is a landmark classic, is not going to make this list. And I'm going to give my reasons why I don't, I'm, not, I'm personally not putting it on there. I think it's a great film, but you know, with all my lists, there's gotta be some controversy. There's gotta be some things where people are like, what do you mean that's not on the list? And, yeah, it's called Cinematic Void for a reason. But anyway, let's get into my top 10 horror films of the 60s list right now. Coming in at number 10 on my 60s horror film list is a film from the former Soviet Union. It is called V, and it's one of the most unique, really cool, really visually interesting kind of horror movies ever made. For those you haven't seen, basically a priest is kind of forced or, you know, given the task of staying in a tomb of a recently deceased witch for the next three nights to make sure, you know, everything goes well. And, well, it gets pretty spooky there. This is one of the great kind of folk horror movies. Really cool, really unique, really great monsters. Like, if you want kind of a point of reference somewhere around, like, you know, something like Valerie and her Week of Wonders and a little bit of the Japanese film House. Kind of mix those two together and get a, kind of what V is. Number nine on my 60s horror film list is quintessential one of the classic 60s horror movies. I'm talking about Eyes Without a Face. It is a French film and for those who haven't seen it, basically a brilliant surgeon ends up disfiguring his daughter and because he's so like heartbroken and upset, he's just trying to do everything within his power to fix her, including kidnapping women and trying to perform face transplants on his daughter so she has a brand new face and, well, doesn't go too well. This is a very eerie and creepy horror movie. It's, again, it's one of the 60s classics and if you're definitely looking for a good starting point of 60s horror, if you haven't been really watching stuff, I think Eyes Without a Face is a great place to start. I do want to mention that when this film was originally released in the US, it was called the the horror chamber of Dr. Faustus, which kind of made it sound like some schlocky, really B-movie. In fact, it was paired on a double bill with a movie called Monster, because it was half man, half monster. Wasn't that just making a monster? Anyway, definitely don't watch that version of the film. Seek out the original Eyes Without a Face. At number eight on my 60s horror film list is the movie that pretty much got me into horror movies and, you know, becoming a cinephile in general. It is 1968's. Night of Living Dead, directed by the great George A. Romero. This is a very important movie to me. I did an episode of In the Mouth of Cinemadness where I talk about how I discovered this movie and the impact it had on me. I kind of had this at different places on this list. I had it higher, I had it lower, and you know, kind of thinking like, I don't know where the rank is, but I do know it belongs on my personal top 10 60s horror film list. It is a landmark movie. It basically set forth what became the modern zombie film. And again, I can't overstate how important this movie is to me personally and to the horror genre just in general. Coming in at number seven on my 60s horror film list is a movie directed by half the Archers. The Archers were a filmmaking duo of Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger, who directed things such as The Red Shoes and The Tales of Hoffman, but they eventually split up, and Michael Powell made one of the great 60s horror movies, which is Peeping Tom. If you haven't seen it, it's about a really creepy kind of young man that likes to take his film camera out and stab women with the tripod leg and film their death. And this movie came out in 1960. It came out the same year as Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, 
But unlike Psycho, which became a landmark horror movie, Michael Powell had his career ruined over this movie. People were like, this is vile, this is violent, and all these things. And like Hitchcock was kind of worried he was going to get the same thing when Psycho came out. Because he was like, I think I'm kind of paraphrasing the quote, but he's like, look at what you did to poor Mikey Powell with Peeping Tom. What are you going to do with me with Psycho? And it's kind of the reason why I put Peeping Tom on this list and I didn't put Psycho. I think Psycho obviously is a landmark 60s horror film. You know, no one's going to debate that. It... Do I need to put it on my list? Because you already, most of you probably already have it on your list, but I, I just want to champion Peeping Tom a lot more. It's visually beautiful, it's creepy, it's really messed up, it's really dark and progressive, especially for a 60s horror film. So if you haven't seen Peeping Tom, there's a Blu-ray in the Criterion Collection. If you go to the art houses or have a repertory theater, ask them to play, because there's a beautiful restoration that you can you know see on the big screen definitely check out michael powell's peeping tom at number six comes the very first adaptation of shirley jackson's the haunting of hill house of course i'm talking about 1963's the haunting directed by robert wise robert wise started out as a film editor he was the editor of orson wells's citizen kane he also directed west side story however you won't see any singing and dancing in the haunting for those you haven't seen it basically Hill House has had a long history of people that live there to mysteriously and tragically dying under weird circumstances. Most people think it's haunted. So a paranormal investigator decides to bring a group of people to the house and find out, is Hill House really haunted? This is a great psychological horror film, and it kind of leaves you guessing if the house is really haunted or is just a bunch of weird circumstances that gives the vibe of how like evil this place may or may not be. Number five on my 60s horror film list is the directorial debut of Peter Bogdanovich. It was produced by Roger Corman. It stars Boris Karloff in one of his last on-screen appearances and honestly might be his best overall performance of his career. The movie was co-written by Polly Platt, who was also the set decorator on the movie. I'm talking about 1968's Targets. For those who haven't seen the movie, basically there is a young man that keeps telling people there's something wrong in his head and he goes out buys a bunch of guns kills his family and then starts going on a killing spree that culminates at a drive-in movie theater where this aging horror icon played by Karloff is making his last public appearance targets is one of the great you know harrowing movies about gun violence the killer in this movie is actually modeled after Charles Whitman who went to the University of Texas and shot up a group of people and in fact, when you watch Targets, and I remember watching this when I screened it a couple of years ago, which incidentally, unfortunately happened right after a mass shooting, there's a couple of title cards that explains gun violence in America and kind of asking question, how do we make this stop? How do we make, you know, how we fix this? And it's kind of sad that a movie in the 60s was saying a bunch of things that we're still saying now about gun violence and nothing has changed. It's kind of disheartening when you think about it. At the number four spot on my 60s horror film list comes from one of the masters of cinema and just in general. I'm talking about Ingmar Bergman and this film is Hour of the Wolf. It stars Max von Sydow who was in tons of other Bergman productions including The Seventh Seal but some of you probably best know him for his role in The Exorcist. Also stars another Bergman regular, Lee Bowman, who is in one of the all-time just great movies ever made, Persona. For those who haven't seen it, basically an artist goes to a remote island with his pregnant wife and starts kind of succumbing to like these weird primal urges and like sinister thoughts and kind of starts hallucinating and kind of drifts in madness. There are tons of creepy elements in this movie. Famously, there's a shot of an eyeball cocktail that will just make your skin crawl. One of the great, great just films, let alone horror films of the 60s in general. At number three on my 60s horror film list is one of the most influential horror movies ever made. A psychological horror, done its best. I'm talking about Repulsion, starring Catherine Deneau. If you haven't seen Repulsion, Deneau plays a kind of repressed, like, detached woman that's living with her sister and really hates her sister's kind of, like, lover, boyfriend, or whoever this guy is. He's just basically a scumbag, and basically her character just starts really hating men and kind of like drifts off into madness and like really violent hallucinations. There's thousands of imitators of this movie and honestly no one has ever come close to touching the dread, the horror, the psychological damage you'll get from watching Repulsion. 
At number two on my 60s horror film list is actually one of my all-time favorite movies, not just from the 60s or a horror movie, just flat out all-time top 10 favorite movies. And I am talking about 1966's Seconds, directed by John Frankenheimer and starring Rock Hudson. Very against type if you're used to seeing Rock Hudson in movies with Doris Day or the melodramas he did with Douglas Sirk. This certainly isn't it. This film is beautifully shot in black and white by James Wong Howe, one of the greatest cinematographers to ever step behind a camera. And there's some crazy visuals in the movie, including a insane opening credit sequence by the great Saul Bass, who did posters and opening credit sequences for Alfred Hitchcock and Stanley Kubrick, and of course directed Phase 4. For those of you who haven't seen Seconds, basically a middle-aged man is just very unhappy with his life. He gets a call from a friend of his that he thought was dead, who basically tells him, you can have a second chance. Get it? That's why the movie's called Seconds, you know? Second chance. And he agrees, he pays a bunch of money, they fake his death, they give him plastic surgery, just make him a completely different person. It goes from a frumpy middle-aged man to Rock Hudson and give him this life as a artist in Malibu. And, you know, as much as he thinks he has the life that he always wanted and this great second chance, kind of screws it up and kind of realizes the life he had wasn't really that bad. This is a movie filled with dread. I personally really love watching movies where people just seemingly go out of their way to fuck up their life and make it worse, and Seconds is definitely one of those movies. So yeah, number two on my list, John Frankenheimer's Seconds. And for number one on my 60s horror film list is not only the number one for this list, it is my all-time favorite film. This is a movie that means a lot to me. In fact, I have a tattoo of the main character, Mary Henry from the movie. I know it's upside down, but you know, bear with me. I mean, I can flip it real quick or something. Anyway, I'm talking about Herc Harvey's Carnival Souls. Again, I love this movie. This was a movie I watched on endless loop during the pandemic when I was just like, couldn't sleep, insomnia, and it, I weirdly found comforting because I just felt like I was so disassociated from the world, which is a big part of what this movie's about. For those of you who haven't seen Carnival Souls, and I know kind of hit at some of the themes, basically a woman is in a tragic car accident that she shouldn't have survived. And she miraculously does and decides to leave the town she's in and starts a new life. But she's continually drawn to this weird abandoned carnival at her at the new place that she's moved to. And she keeps seeing like ghostly figures coming after her who seem to like want to bring her to this carnival. This is the only feature-length film directed by Herc Harvey. He was working for Centron, who was making educational and industrial short films and that kind of stuff. You know, he famously did Shake Hands with Danger, which is a very infamous safety film that has one of the best theme songs of just any movie in general. Shake hands with danger, find it anywhere you choose. Be careless for a moment, spend a lifetime with the blues. And he also directed the original Halloween safety film. Carnival Souls is basically centered around this great otherworldly performance by Candace Hillgoss as Mary Henry. It's just, there's just something broken and lost within her character that just really resonated with me. And you know, this is a movie that I will continually go back and rewatch over and over again. And if you do get a chance to see it in a movie theater on film, I showed this back in 2022 and it was probably one of my favorite in theater experiences, just watching that movie projected on the screen on celluloid. It, it was like basically really a religious experience. This movie does what all great art should do. It should move something in your soul, and Carnival Souls does that, and that's why it's my number one pick for 60s horror films, and also why it's my all-time favorite film. So that's gonna wrap up my top 10 60s horror film list. Again, sound off the comments, tell me what you think about the list, and also tell me some of your favorite 60s horror films that I didn't mention. You know, obviously, again, this is just my personal list and maybe there's something on here that you haven't seen yet that you're gonna go check out because of this list. And obviously, if you mention something I've never seen, I'm gonna definitely go check it out because that's kind of the point of these lists. It's to have a conversation about film and talk about film because I love film and if you're coming to this channel, I assume you love film too. You wouldn't be hate watching a list about, you know, films that I love, that seems crazy, but if you haven't already make sure you're liking subscribing all that stuff you're supposed to do on youtube so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and you find a couple of movies that you haven't seen that you're willing to check out and 
maybe, just maybe, they become your new favorite movies. Until next time, see you in the void.